This is for weakly coupled systems. Um, in connection with the quantum basics, I want to add something. Uh, comment on QM versus CM. quantum mechanics versus classical mechanics. There is much debate and doubt and controversy about quantum mechanics being so bizarre and then what is really happening is it, you know these words ontology and epistemology is it, epistemology is uh, how you organize knowledge whereas ontology is what exists, what is actually out there. So how do you know whether this is just a organization of how what you can know versus whether there is a absolute reality out there. So, a lot of philosophical things going on. So, I just want to point out that there are as many elephants in the uh, living room in the classical theory that people do not seem to worry about anymore. And one of them is uh, calculus. So, in classical mechanics we have the idea of derivative, right, x dot equal to limit delta t going to 0 of, you know, and similarly other derivatives df by dx, right, some limit of delta x going to 0 of whatever. Did anybody in real life actually take the limit to 0? Did they? Well, when they did they found quantum mechanics. Before they reached 0, they began to find quantum mechanics. The smallest scales they reached was atomic scale, nuclear scale, LHC has reached some astronomically smaller scale than that, but nobody has reached 0, right? nobody has explored 0. So, this idea that this limit exists is a fiction from the point of view of physics, because no limit has, nobody has got a stopwatch which can be calibrated to go to exact 0. The best uh, cesium clocks we have, have frequencies in whatever. So, you can tune your frequencies correct to part per parts per 10 raise to 18, whatever you want, it is never 0. So, this limit was never actually taken in practice, but people so firmly believe in it that they think that classical mechanics therefore made the world predictable and then you could provide x and x dot at one instant of time and then Newton told you how to go in the future did they, how precisely did they know the past? It is just that the precision of all their measurements was so poor that it looked fine. But in reality, classical mechanics is essentially founded on fictional ideas of what is the continuum. The ideas of what is continuum are, have been made very precise and refined. But whether those ideas actually define the continuum, the physics continuum, we do not know. In fact, what we do know is that if we try to explore at the really small scales, we find quantum mechanics. So, better be open minded about what is out there and learn it rather than try to uh, be pedantic about what was learned from uh, larger scales. So, I think this is something that most people seem to not get. And uh, our cognition has to be expanded to uh, absorb new things rather than trying to force newer things to fit into the cognition, cognitional uh, devices developed earlier. 
Okay, so that is uh, enough of a comment. Now let us go to uh, this particular formulation of a path integral. Let us begin with uh, some fixing of uh, nomenclature and notation. Uh, we write Schrodinger picture states in this notation psi t s. <coughs> so, we will put subscript s for Schrodinger and it is a time dependent state function. Now, we can write it out as being equal to sum uh, of energy eigenstates C n e raise to minus i e n t over h cross times the n eigenstate. Okay, so, where n is energy eigenstates. So, now we have another notation these things written like this with some eigen values written in them with no time dependence or anything are basis states. So, we use the same kind of angular bracket notation, but n are basis states. So, the set n is basis set. On the other hand, Heisenberg picture we write psi h the state is not time dependent and the relation is psi s is equal to e raise to minus i h t acting on this psi at t equal to 0, which we can define to be equal to psi h. So, this is sort of for convenience if you like, but well the time independent state is the Heisenberg picture state. Okay. And for Heisenberg picture state, we will have a simple statement, it will simply be C n n. Okay. And <coughs> of course, one should then write the evolution for Heisenberg picture. Uh, and that is given by uh, right for operators we have right. So, okay, one can write down that statement of e raise to mind i h t or etcetera and we are not going to need it fully. But this is just to fix the ideas that we write psi h, we write psi s and then we will uh, write like this. Now, this is the basic point, I mean basic notation. Next, we consider uh, the kernel. So, quantum mechanics time evolution can be written out either as a so Schrodinger equation of motion
uh, sorry x t now there is an alternative way of writing so instead of a differential equation we propose T equal to T one to T to T, and what we do is, do we have a, a way of mapping directly from initial time to final time? Suppose I'm not interested in detailed evolution of the wave function. In any case, knowing the wave function at in between points in reality would require you to measure but you don't want to measure you are going you will collapse the wave function so suppose you only want to know it later so what you do is you introduce a two point function so we say uh, like this psi x k x t x1 t1 uh, i'm so sorry no, not like this so we have to go to wave function language uh, right okay so this makes it the schrodinger wave function no angularities okay. uh, you have the usual wave function the definition of that wave function is uh, we have taken the projection on this basis remember things that are unadorned by themselves are basis vectors so this is basis constructed out of x operators and so this is psi x of t and this we want to write out as being equal to okay So this is the idea. So what we have proposed is a kernel. So is the meaning clear? So instead of solving the differential equation, we want to propose an integral equation in which this will be found directly. Okay. So that of course requires lot of information because you have to know this two point function but if you know it then you have the answer. Now that can be uh, determined as follows, we say that integral d3 x1 um, sorry so we have to do only d3 x1 not t1 to t very sorry right so this is not there okay. it is d3 x1 only so integral d3 x1 of we introduce this time dependent basis what we are going to say is that uh, 
we need to so the thing is to get the kernel try something like this try inserting a complete set of states right so this would add to 1 so it is like taking this directly an overlap between the final and the initial. The point is that this needs a careful construction of this Dirac picture states. So, we need And the idea is that we make them instantaneous eigenstates of uh, the Heisenberg picture operators. By saying that we define So, earlier I had said that things that have nothing else in them except some eigenvalues are basis, but now we are going to make the basis time dependent okay. and it is time dependent in the sense that it will return exactly the same eigenvalue regardless of the time at which I measure it provided I use the Heisenberg picture time dependent operator and I may as well write down now the, uh, so it is This is if you want uh, Schrodinger picture operator. So, that is the relation between the Schrodinger picture and Heisenberg picture. So, the meaning of this is that action of x on this returns an instantaneous eigenstate and we can write this out as because this is uh, time dependent So, if we define by the opposite action e raise to plus i h t the on a down basis, then this will work.
So, now these two will cancel x s acting on the on add on basis will return the eigen value x and then it will become So, this is a bit of uh, technicality and if you are reading this for the first time you may find that I am struggling over a <coughs> technical point, well it is technical. Unfortunately, most books do not tell you that the Feynman kernel is a calculation between Dirac picture state and Dirac picture state, they just write in state and out state, but the in state and out state are actually this Dirac picture. Okay. So, now we go back here and then we can see what is the meaning of this kernel. The kernel is actually, so uh, shall I just quickly repeat what we have done, we have introduced a time dependent basis, if we, suppose we ask for x t Dirac basis like this, the answer is that thus Dirac basis is defined by this. The, Dirac, the basis that will satisfy this relation is defined by this. Okay. And now we will see the use of and so we just check that that is correct in the sense of uh, you know this intervening operator and all does not affect anything. We exactly regain this statement and then our argument is that the kernel has to be defined in terms of the Dirac picture basis. So, note that So, once I take the e raise to i h t out and see it as operating back on this, it is basically, so the wave function, the usual wave function is either Schrodinger picture state projected on the usual basis or it is the Heisenberg picture state projected onto time dependent basis. Okay. And so, now we can read off what this kernel is. I at a <coughs> later time is equal to integral over the intermediate time d 3 x 1 of um, right.
right because psi is Dirac picture basis projection of Heisenberg picture state. So that is this and this and all we have done is inserted the identity in between. So, so now we got the precise mathematical tool which passes muster as kernel. So we can now say that therefore the kernel is qi ti q, uh, so this part we can now write as So three lines, this is equivalent to saying I have this, then I have k of x t x 1 t 1 and now in the this I again let go back to the original. So then it will just look as if, so side the Dirac basis overlap with Heisenberg picture operator is same as ordinary basis overlapped on Schrodinger picture which is just the wave function. So it is psi right which is the desired kernel So that is the precise meaning of the kernel. Provided both these are in the Dirac picture. Point one. So end of lemma, end of you know preparatory remarks one. Now we go to the next part which is that Dirac's original motivation for the path integral. And here again there is a danger of lapsing into very technical discussion. So I will not do it because it is given in Dirac's book I can forward to you the notes. And what we will do is that we will agree to some basic uh, statement that uh, the reasoning goes like this that in classical mechanics any two set of canonical variables can be related by a canonical transformation. By the way, <coughs> the word canonical actually comes, uh, Goldstein remarks from the word kanun, means law, you know, so kind of legal, the formal, the, okay. So by a canonical uh, transformation.
and I hope that you have studied this um, transformations with small q and big q and you get from one to the other by uh, differentiating the generate. So, there is usually a generator associated with it, but the dynamical variables at any time Therefore, time evolution itself should right at any instant of time they are canonical, they are satisfy the canonical brackets, uh, possum brackets. So, therefore, time evolution itself is a canonical transformation. the technicality what is the generator of this transformation and the answer is that it is the Hamilton's principal function which is defined in Goldstein's book as So, this is a canonical, you remember there are four kinds of canonical transformation, old q's, new p's, old p's, new q's or old q and new q. So, this is of the type old q to new, new q, okay. This is the generator. So, it is equal to the integral from x i t i to x f t f of and Hamilton's principal function is defined as p x dot minus h d t where <coughs> where the time integration is on the classical trajectory. Or one should say dynamic everything is classical mechanics. So, the integration, so this is a appendage to the integral sign. You might say what have you learnt because if you already know the dynamical trajectory then what is that to be solved. But this is a formal statement about what is the meaning of the canonical transformation, what is its generator and what it consists of. So, in the language of canonical transformation, the time evolution is a, a canonical transformation generated by this particular generator so that p final would be got as equal to d s by d q f and p initial well I, I mean there are vector signs but so you put gradient if you like 
So, P i equal to minus d s by because it is the lower limit this is so x I hope I did not write q, okay. I have notes in which I have used q and p here I started writing x and p. Okay. So, this is how the old and new this is how the generator works okay it is a function of the old moment old coordinates and new coordinates and therefore the new moment and old moment are derived from it by this. So, but you have to do the integration so do not mistake this for the action principle or the action. The action is a functional this is not a functional <coughs> it is a two point function of real numbers real arguments which are only the end points and the p x h everything is function of time such that it is lying on the dynamical trajectory and you have done the integral along the dynamical trajectory but from the two desired between the two desired end points. Then the object that you assemble of course you would know it parametrically as a function of the end points x f t f q x i t i and that multivariate calculus function not a functional that function is called Hamilton's principal function. So, all this was formalized by Jacobi and I think the word canonical also goes to Jacobi. So, this theory of transformations. So, coming back to Dirac's motivation he says look for every transformation of basis that you can do in classical mechanics there exists a unitary operator which implements it in quantum mechanics. Okay. So, next recall postulate number which no third only third. So, we just said linear operators second one was uh, observables or Hermitian operators and third was transformations are implemented by unitary operators. So, corresponding to a transformation in classical mechanics there exists a unitary operator in q m which will implement the same thing and the operator in q m u would be exponential of i times some generator g where g would be a Hermitian generator. the unitary operator would be given by exponential of a i times a Hermitian operator which we usually refer to as a generator. Here we found that for the classical system the generator is this. So, if we exponentiate that we should get a unitary operator that implements this, but there is one major problem the it is a dynamical evolution and these quantities at different times do not commute. So, we cannot just exponentiate the whole integral. What we can be sure of is that in the infinitesimal limit it would work. 